Hi, welcome. Hi guys, welcome back to uh, part number two of lecture two. We'll be speaking about circuit switching. So we were uh, previously speaking about packet switching where uh, a file is basically uh, split into packets sent across some links to the network uh, and get uh, consolidated to the destination right so um, now we'll be speaking about circuit switching so circuit switching uh, you you have to take the analogy that a circuit is basically um, a dedicated a dedicated area that the data needs to follow from the sender to the receiver so there's no uh, packet being sent but then there's a road a unique road that the data will have to follow to travel so you can see uh, here we basically have um, two basically two computers there is computer A and computer B, right? Uh, we have uh, switches here, right? And uh, each and every switch uh, has a link. So this, this is a link. And um, each link has a circuit. One, two, three, four, right? Four circuits. So wh wh what you're seeing basically on the image of your of uh, my right, it's basically a computer takes some data and then uses here the second link, right? Uh, and when it gets to the next switch, it uses the first link. So the data goes there. But then you, you have to go back to a bit of history. This circuit su switching is based on the previous old old phones that we are using in the past so let's assume that you have a phone here you have another phone here uh, if you remember those phones that were having the dials like this and then you were basically turning rotating that dial to get to a number so you have phone one phone two phone three phone four uh, and then all those phones are basically connected and uh, let's assume another phone five here and uh, we have uh, the, the connection here so if phone one wanted to connect to phone five for instance then you need to basically you basically need to uh, secure a connection between phone one and phone five and once you secure that connection then that connection will will be dedicated to you between one and five so the connection here is dedicated this is exactly what you know so like from from the the the, the, the customer of this computer a and uh, the customer of this computer b this link is only dedicated to them whereas in the packet switching the link is not dedicated when the when the packet passes through the link it's forgotten it's like another packet can go through the no worries but then here there is no sharing of data between this link and this other link right so this is this is the most important part you need to know about uh, a bigger view of the circuit su switching. So we will start our um, uh, a discussion here with what we call a frequency division multiplexing. So the multiplexing multiplexing just means that uh, we're sending multiple signals into the same channel. So on one side of the channel, you have data on like, let's assume that uh, you have a channel, right? And uh, here, here, it's a device, or let's assume that here, 
we have a device called the multiplexer. And then on the other side, we have a device called the demultiplexer. Right. So uh, using here, it is basically using um, um, analo ana analog signals, right? Uh, with analog signals, uh, digital signals, my bad, digital signals. So digital signals, um, yeah, uh, digital analog, yeah. So it's using digital signals. So we were speaking about waves here. So it's like, okay, let's, let's say that it's using some waves, right? So we have our waves happening here. It's like uh, we have this type of signals going on, right? So this is this is basically one user, and we have another one having our wave signals, right? And then we have the last one having a third wave signal. They're basically going into what we call the multiplexer and then the multiplexer here will basically translate each and every of these signals into uh, in such a way that they get into this single channel and then they will be in there so this channel is dedicated to user one this channel uh, let's take another color for instance this channel is dedicated to user two, and uh, the last one is dedicated to user three, right? And uh, after that, the demultiplexer will be then sending the the data to uh, to each and every delivery um, unit. It can be anything based on what we receive from uh, the, the multiplexer. So we have signal number one will be exactly where it's supposed to go out. Sing uh, uh, signal number one will go away. It's, there is no relationship between signal number one and signal number two and signal number three. They're all well separated. They're all doing their purpose. They're going away. So in this case, then we have four users that basically want to use this channel, right? Now what happens is like this channel will be then divided into four into four separate uh, four separate uh, width, uh, four separate bands, four separate bands. We have one band, two band, three bands, four bands, right? After that we'll be having the band allocation to user one, user two, user three. And after that, the data will then travel on the other side, right? But then what you need to know, and I'm sure most of you are aware of this, we can only assign, let's assume that this channel is having a transmission rate of 100 megabits per second. Right, so if all of this channel is having a a a a, a size of hundred megabits per second, then each and every user is having then twenty five megabits per second on each and every uh, band, and as you guessed, this hundred megabit per second is called the bandwidth. Yeah, this is uh, this is it. So this one is the bandwidth. So we can allocate multiple users, but then as you add users to the bandwidth, you're reducing then the if it's divided by five here, you're then reducing the speed allocated. Per, per per user. So if you have five, then instead of twenty five, we'll be having twenty megabit per second, right? So this is one thing, and then it's mostly used uh, 
I would say in Wi-Fi communication within a specific network where you have a bandwidth and then you have users. That's the reason why if multiple people are sitting on the same Wi-Fi unit, then the bandwidth can, we say, yeah, the bandwidth is 100 megabit per second, but then you are too many, let's say you are even 100, then you're going back to one megabit per second. And you can see why now your network will be very slow. Now we have a time division multiplexing. The time division multiplexing, you still have the same channel as the one on top, but then now it will be split into time slots, right? Into time slots per user. So uh, what, what happens is we have divisions of that, um, of that channel, right? Take this one as something that brings data from one side to the other side based on the number of users we have on the sending side. So each user has a specific slot. And remember, these are dedicated. They are dedicated for users. So this slot is dedicated for user number one, user number two, user number three, and user number four. Right? So like this one piece of data will then travel from one point to the other one, right? Same for this one, same for that one, right? You can see that we have user number one, user number two, user number three, and user number four. These have advantages and disadvantages, both of them. It's like the advantage of, of uh, the frequency is like, you see, each user over time has uh, an allocated band. That's only for that specific user, uh, given that we have a hundred megabit, megabits uh, per second, then each user has a dedicated 25 megabit per second, right? This is pretty fast and then it is very nice. But in, uh, in this instance, each and every user has a time slot T, a little time slot T, right? And uh, same for the next one and for the next one. And there is actually a calculation that you need to know to know in this instance, like in the instance of the, uh, 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 the time division multiplexing that I'll share with you now. So let's, uh, let's assume that um, we, we basically want to know the, the transmission duration of a message from one side to the other using the, the TDM or the time division multiplexing. So what, what you need to do is to make sure that you know the transmission rate per second of the channel. In our instance is 100 mega bits per second right now uh this is this is the transmission rate right and um uh now we will be having the file size the the file the file size let's say it has 100 uh 100 uh megabits right okay now you also need to know what is the, 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 the transmission rate per slot, right? So we have four slots. So that will be, that. What, what, what will be the transmission rate? Let's say the capacity of each and every slot here, right? So we have four slots because we have four users. Then it means that we have 25 as well, megabits per second. Okay. Now, what is the time? What is the time T that it will take to transmit a hundred megabit file from uh, a user A to the user B, right? So what happened is like, um, if I go back a bit, so what happened is basically let me clear, let me clear this. 
All right. Okay, so we wanted time t. All right. So what, what you need to do is like you need to know the transmission rate per slot. Like, you remember we were having the slots, right? We have four slots, it's like four, three, two, one. So since we have four slots and then we have 100 megabits per second, when you divide it by four, we have 25 mega megabits per second. This is, this is the, the transmission rate uh, we keep. So this is what we want. 25 megabits per second. Now, since each and every slot, it means that this is 25, this is 25, this is 25, and this is 25, all of that will then make a 100 uh, megabit per second. Then we we still within our mathematics here. Now, what, what will be the time it will take? It will take then the file size, since we want to send a 100 megabit per second, right, divided by 25, uh, we, we have a hundred megabits divided by 25 megabits per second. Then we have uh, four seconds to send uh, that hundred megabit, megabit file. All right. So the formula, the formula will be then um, something like uh, if I erase this guy or from this side the formula then will be the transmission rate per slot right uh, which is equals to the rate the initial rate which is 100 megabit per second divided by the number of slots right and uh, given given that we have this thing and uh, the duration D, it equals to the file size, the file we, we want to transmit, divided by the transmission rate per slot plus a delay. Take note of this, it's very important. The duration to send a particular the duration to send a particular file, right, is the file size divided by the transmission rate per slot. This is the formula plus uh, the, the, the a delay. And we assume that the delay is zero, zero seconds. All right. Okay. Cool. Now, Okay, this, this example basically uh, speaks about the implementation of the circuit switching. Um, yeah, so we have an example of, yeah, the packet switching basically allows more users to use the network. Obviously, we're dealing with packets. We do not dedicate any, any hardware to our communication, right? So let's assume that we have a one gigabyte per second link, a single link. Each user is using a hundred megabyte when active. It's like uh, when active, we're using ten percent of the line. So secret session, we can only have, we basically have ten users, right, to use that link. Right, ten users to use that link. Then we have, um, after that, we'll be having a hundred megabyte, a hundred gigabyte per second, like uh, ten times this 100 makes it a gig right but then you can only have those 10 you cannot add anyone else because it is like that each and every user is having its own link and you can't add anything and even if a user doesn't use anything then like you we, we can't even uh use that empty empty link that we we that is basically idling but then when we have a packet switching, you can have as many users as we want. The problem will be now the congestion of some of, of some switches that, that will be on the network. Yeah. Okay. So now it will be your homework to basically know how 
was the probability for us to get uh, 0 0.004 and uh, I'm giving you this I'll be giving you that in the quiz with 35 users the probability uh, of having more than 10 users at the same time is 0 0.004 why All right what happened if the number of users is greater than 20 uh, is greater than 35 users that will be your homework okay then you have to do great research to understand first of all how we got to 0 0.004 and uh, what what happened if you have the same configuration one gigabit per second in a link and then we have um, we, we have a packet based uh, switching okay now what's the difference between packet switching and circuit switching this is where we're going basically towards the end of the second part packet switching is is very efficient so it doesn't dedicate any it doesn't dedicate any link so you have user one and then you have a user a you have a user b and then you have some some network uh, devices here so and they all multi-connected what what the packet does is like you have packets that will travel uh, regardless of where they are and when they get to be they just consolidate themselves into the same entity but uh, when it comes to the circuit switching then we have a link it's like uh, we're making a phone call and we want to make sure that we have the best experience it means that we need to have a single link between user a and user b right so uh, the problem with the packet switching as we saw is when we have um, we have a user a and user b and we have uh, a a switch here the transmission hit rate here is maybe one megabyte and the transmission hit rate here is maybe 10. we might have congestion on this specific uh, uh, computer network of this co basically on this uh, uh, switch because the rate at which it's receiving data is greater at the rate at which it's sending out data that 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 can be a problem but then also uh, in the circuit switching we, we might have the same trouble right if basically the transfer rate here and here data can be lost just like we can lose data but here if there's congestion user a will retain the data so the transmission is guaranteed for the secret searching but then the transmission is not guaranteed in the packet switching um, and uh, i'm quoting the authors of the book here they're saying that generally the people who do not like to do restaurant reservations are basically uh they, they basically like using the packet switching a human a, a basically a human um uh, similarity of uh, packet switching and um and the uh, circuit switching so packet switching let's say that you want to go to the restaurant right you don't want to do any reservation you just say okay cool i'm going to the restaurant like uh, mcdonald's or debonair's and say okay can you please order me a pizza and then you get the pizza or you go to the restaurant like a proper restaurant and then you go and sit down there it's like okay uh, i'll just go and see if there's a sit there if there's a seat available then i'll sit and then i'll eat if there's no seat available i'll go somewhere else but the circuit switching people they will sit down make a phone call can we reserve a seat and then you reserve a seat so from your home you have a guarantee that when i arrive there there will be a seat that will be allocated to me and if i don't come or if i don't show up it will be a problem because some people might come is like no sir this table is reserved no sir that table is reserved so the restaurant is losing customers because of a reservation so you have to know your trade-off and the internet the broader network the network of networks is mostly using packet switching right uh, but then uh, we will be going packet switching because it's faster 
and it's becoming more reliable. And uh, that's basically the reason why we will be going into the next section that is the network of networks. Thank you guys.